Hey, what's up, everybody? The Bible says that foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, and I want to talk about that a little bit. So let me start by asking you a question. Are your kids stupid? I, I, long pause there. I, I genuinely want you to answer this question with all sincerity. You don't have to answer me. Just answer to yourself with all sincerity. Are your kids stupid? And then the secondary question, uh, what, which of your children is most gifted? And which of your children do you worry about the most in life? And those are questions that you should have asked yourself year one if you already have kids. But these are going to give you things to think about, especially if you listeners don't have kids. Um, and these these are going to be things that you haven't thought about. I... It recently came to my attention that kids are stupid. And it's not news. It's just one of those things you don't think about. But they are. Kids are, they're just dumb. And the reason, like you ever meet dumb people out in public, they used to be kids. And they were even dumber. Like we, a part of the problem is, you know, we're starting out in life and life is hard and There's a lot of things to know and a lot of things to understand and recognize. And so we're just going to trip and stumble and and fail at some things along the way. But the other thing is that it's mostly y'all's fault. And when I say y'all, like the adults, the teenagers, the older people who have figured things out, like we're not mentoring as a society. We're not mentoring our children as a family. Uh, We're not teaching them, like, basic things. A lot of, surprisingly, a lot of people think, like, like, their kids, they don't, they're overwhelmed. They're just, they wake up and they're like, oh my God, I'm an adult and I have kids. And that, in itself, stresses them out and they're overwhelmed and they don't know what to do about it. And so, they, you know, put a little Irish cream in their coffee and they jump online and they start squirreling through dumb Twitter TikTok videos and you know, you're watching videos that are made by people who are just as dumb as you or dumber. And a lot of times it's people who are dumber because it tends to make you feel better about yourself. It's funny. It's funny to watch dumb people do things and then they have the consequence, you know, the instant karma videos and stuff. That's funny. I'm not, I'm not trying to like shame anybody for that. I do that. That's, that's great. What I'm suggesting you do is just take some time and look up kids are dumb. And you'll notice two phenomena. Videos where kids are just doing basic figuring life out stuff. And it's kind of cute, adorable. Like there was one video I I watched. And his kid was in the back seat trying to tie his shoe. And his dad was in the front seat like, you don't want no help? He says, no, no thank you. And his dad's filming and he looks up and he says, why are you videoing me? You worry about yourself. Why don't you worry about, you drive drive the car, why you worry about, you worry about yourself, and you go drive, and I'm like, this kid isn't stupid, this kid is actually, like, getting a head start in life, this kid's gonna do great, or I wish more people were like that, like, don't worry about what you worry about what I'm doing, you worry about yourself, that's, that's, it's, that's real wisdom right there, so you'll see some videos that are just miscategorized of kids being adorable or actually winning, and then they're just writing it off, it's like, kids are being stupid, because they're stupid, and you're just like, you know, innocent figuring stuff out, but then you'll have really, really stupid stuff, like, you know how sometimes I talk about you, how you can't predict insanity, you can't predict what type of insanity is coming next, that kind of stupid, you can't predict it, like, like, why are you peeing in the drawer, I saw the thumbnail of a kid trying to paint the fence with water, whether that's pretend or real life, that's stupid, that's a stupid thing to do, Um, And there's some things where it's just like, you don't know any better. And then there's some things that are just stupid. And those are the videos you'll find. But that's what I want you to, to use as an inspiration as you honestly assess your kids to find out, like, are you stupid? Because the answer is, in a lot of ways, yes. That's why we have to teach them how to read and write and talk. But it, it, it can't stop there. Like, we seem to think that kids are just going to absorb the world through osmosis 
And then what we do is we, we send them off to public school or whatever, or we stick them in front of a tablet, or we stick them in front of TV. And it, like I just spent a good, what, five minutes explaining to you stupid videos on the internet. So that's already a bad idea. Like You should not be sticking your kid in front of a tablet to absorb stupidity. Um, like I'm just saying, at least try to be in control of of what's coming through the stream. Like when I sit my kids down at the computer or at the tablet, it's because they're watching television programs like Pokemon or Garfield or some science show. It's something with like a plot, a beginning, middle and end. It's not Teletubbies where they're just talking gibberish or whatever. Like my kids like watching Garfield because they like the humor. They like watching Pound Puppies because they like the storytelling. They like watching Pokemon. It's dumb. It's, it's for kids, but it's not stupid. It's not like these new Nick Jr. shows where they're just like, bah, 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 bah. that's reinforcing stupid. Like, that's why you don't talk to your kids and baby talk. Oh my God, we got so much ground to cover. <laughs> so sticking your kids in front of a tablet, bad idea, unless you're going to be actively involved in that. And if you're the parent that I mentioned in the beginning is just stressed out, like, oh my God, I got kids. That ain't, that ain't going to help. It's just going to make matters worse. Because nine times out of ten, you're not only, like, making your kids more stupid, but you're also making them autistic. There's a such thing as screen-induced autism. And so now you have a stupid and autistic kid who's pro- likely going to be obnoxious. And this is the third base we'll cover. Obnoxious is a good way to tell if your kids are stupid. So we got all these these different branches to look at. And I'm, and I'm saying, oh, oh, the third thing. So you stick them in front of the TV, stick them in front of the tablet. The TV, we learned a long time ago, TV programs people on how to behave. This is why you have girls, like teenage girls and girls in their early 20s that act like anime characters and Cardi B at the same time. Because that's what they saw on TV. I actually will restrict my kids' TV time any f- even further if they start to behave like the characters on the television. I'll be like, why are you acting like a cartoon character? stop acting like that, that's stupid, I'll tell them, that's stupid, or that's annoying, or or whatever it is, I, I'll tell them so they'll know, oh, this is what people mean when they say stupid, this behavior, so, you know, we wake up, we do that, we, we send them to public school, public school's interesting, because foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, and when you have a bunch of kids in the same room that don't know what they're talking about, it's almost impressive the levels of uh, coercion that kids will go through to convince the other kids that they do know what they're talking about and so they all walk around and they'll be like people with big feet or stinky you know they'll just have these like things that they make up because they don't you know because some other kid told them or they they don't have the words or the or the ethics or the etiquette to fill in for a specific situation so they'll make something up and if you don't believe me, listen to Gen Zers talk. The other day, this guy asked me if I knew what a glizzy was. And I said, no, that's, that sounds retarded. And he laughed. And I was like, are you going to tell me what a glizzy is? And he says, it's a hot dog. And I was like, I don't believe you. Because it's stupid. I mean, he could be setting me up to, you know, how, like when you teach somebody swear words in another language and then you just let them loose. So I'm not going to be walking around calling hot dogs a glizzy because I don't believe him, for one. And two, I haven't bothered to look it up because I'm never going to use that word out loud other than this one time I'm doing it. Listen to to how Gen Zer is talking. Tell me it's not stupid. But it's because they don't... They had to make up things because they didn't have the vocabulary in place to properly assess a situation or discuss things. And this is foolishness bound up in the heart of a child being transferred to other children so that's what they'll soak up through osmosis um another principle that we get from scripture is that good bad morals corrupts good character and this is absolutely true this is why stupid spreads faster than wisdom you actually have to guard your children against stupidity um letting them know hey that's stupid don't do that you know reminding them of what that behavior is so let's get into some specific stuff because I feel like I'm just kind of like rambling a little bit 
here are some ways that you can tell that your kids are expressing stupidity and that you can just really start to nip things in the bud. Kids bicker about nothing. They'll just find reasons to bicker. Like, I don't know when the last time you shut down a major argument between your kids and just everybody got a spanking and then you were just like, I don't care why you guys are fighting like this. It's nine o'clock in the morning. Like that was, that was, that's a me move all day. Get down from there. You don't tell me. You get down. No, you go up there. Okay, why is it so important that you tell her to get up or down? Why are you yelling at him like that? Both of y'all come here. Everybody's getting this man. But he said, I don't care why. Y'all, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. You need to learn how to control yourself better than this. This ain't it. And so, you know, dealing with stupid situations like that swiftly uh, will kind of teach the kids to behave and to address the situation differently. And I knew that it was not a big deal because my oldest daughter, this was the third one in the argument, she was not in the argument. She's like, guys, stop. It's not that serious. Like in a real normal tone of voice. And so she, she, she gets it. Like, this is stupid. Stop arguing. What are you guys fighting about? Like she didn't, and she was right there. She didn't even know. And so hopefully if one of your kids starts to catch on to like, Hey, this is, this is the behavior that leads to swift justice. Stop. Um, you know, they'll be able to warn the other kids and you guys, you know, that's, that's what learning is. So yeah, arguing and bickering over nothing means you're going to have to intercede unjustly. Doesn't matter who started it, I'm finishing it. Doesn't matter who said what, I don't care. Shut up, get over here. Everybody's getting spanking because it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, that's just one example. Now, that's not everybody's cup of tea. Some people would rather do the gentle parenting thing where you remind children like an adult in an office like over and 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 over, which leads me to the second thing, persistence. Um, there are kids that will go, mom, 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 for infinity minus one. They don't get you're ignoring them. And yet you insist on ignoring them. So this is like an imposed stupidity. This is actually your stupidity imposed on everyone in the room because we have to listen to your kid go, mom, 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 and you're ignoring them. And I know you hear them, but you won't answer because you're trying to teach some sort of lesson that's clearly not being absorbed. <coughs> some parents do this, and I don't know why. I think it's because they want to make sure that like everybody around them knows that they're good parents, but that, that just actually reflects the opposite. It shows that you're not exercising good parenting. When your kids are being annoying and you're not telling them that they're being annoying. Because you know what? Two things are going to happen. You're going to have kids that are annoying, right? And you don't like them. That's the first part. So now you have kids, you don't like them because they're annoying. But it's your fault because you're not telling them to stop being annoying. You're not showing them what annoying is. You're not stopping, like interrupting them when they're being annoying. So you just let it happen and then you do these things that reinforce it. The second thing, other people don't like your kids, which is not, that's not the goal. Your goal is not to raise kids that other people don't want to be around because they're likely to become psychopaths and criminals that way. And then the third thing, other people have to tell your kids that they're being annoying. And then they're going to look at you and they're going to say, why didn't you tell me I was being annoying? They might not phrase it that way, but if you, you ever walk around with like a piece of food on your face or something, and then finally somebody tells you and you'd be like, dude, I've been here for like 20 minutes. Nobody told me this was on my face. It's, it feels like betrayal. So kids are, mom, 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 mom. How do you handle that? Well, not saying anything, that's not it. That ain't working. It doesn't work. I don't care what the other podcasters tell you. It does not work. It makes me not like you. It makes me not like being around you. I definitely don't like your kids. Actually makes me resentful to you. And by you, I mean like other parents who let this stuff happen. It makes me resentful to those parents because they know that their kids are annoying and they just won't do anything about it. And so, you know, it's like, hey, do you want to go to Jessica's house? No, no. Her kids are annoying. She just lets them be. 
so obviously, like, and I'm, I'm just implying things, but I'm going to spell it out today. Tell your kids, stop. That's annoying. Dad, I want, you know, no, I'm talking. I'm having a conversation. You don't get to interrupt me just because. Go back upstairs or go, go find something like really, a really good threat is in the one, the most useful threat that I use in my house. It's a, it's something of a, it's halfway between a suggestion and a threat. Go find something to do. I tell my kids this all the time because I want kids that are self-reliant. I want kids that will become self-reliant adults to where like if you ever go to a party and you, you meet these adults that they're not fully formed. So they're like, oh, I have social anxiety. I don't know how to deal with other people. It's because they're not self-reliant. They never had parents tell them to go find something to do. That's what it does. It, infor- it, it, it develops self-reliance in your children. It says, okay, this behavior clearly isn't working. It makes mom angry. Now I've been cast away <laughs> and I have to find something to do. Because it, and it, and it, 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 grow, it's, it has layers to it. You'll have some resentful, rebellious kids. So you say, go find something to do. And they'll argue with you. If you let your kids argue with you, you a chump. You're failing as a parent if you let your kids argue with you. Um, to a degree. I will let my kids argue with me under some circumstances if they have a good argument. But if they're if it's because of, because I said so and I'm asserting my authority situation, no, there's no arguing. But as they grow in wisdom and intelligence, I will give them more room to make arguments, not fight with me, not embarrass their mother in public, not that, that's not what I'm talking about, but to, you know, to make an argument. And sometimes I'll turn, it turns out I'm wrong, or their idea is better, and I'm impressed and proud, so you have to leave some room for that. That's not what I'm talking about. This is, Jimmy, I need you to go back in your room, I'm talking on the phone. But mom, I got to show you this thing. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. What did I just tell you? Go to your room and find something to do before I put this belt on your behind. You want to take a nap? You want... Then get in there and close the door. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Like that. You have to do that. You have to. You have to let your kids know that your prerogative, your agenda is the most important agenda in the house. They're having to show you some crap that they found in the book. That's cute when you're not busy. That's cute when you're just cooking or something. When you're on the phone, when you're talking to other adults, when you're doing something important, that's not the time. It's it, there's a, And so when I started teaching my kids this, I teach them, I would use the word inappropriate. This is an appropriate time. It's not an appropriate time. So when they hear the word inappropriate, they have some context. Is would you just randomly decide to do something? Is this the right time? Another another way of teaching my kids uh, will use responsibility, and I'll tell them what is responsibility. Doing the right thing all the time. Doing the thing that you're supposed to do because it's the thing you're supposed to do. Every time, that's responsibility. That's how they understand it. Um, and I and when they're doing you know, retarded stuff. I'll say, why are you doing that? That, you know, you come in the house and the kid's just sitting at the kitchen table or over in the corner with a hammer smashing ketchup packets. Okay. What 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 are you doing? Why are you doing that? Is that what you, and they're caught and they're like, Oh, Oh, oh." then you know, they know it's wrong. Right. So that's punishable. If they don't know because they're stupid and you didn't teach them yet. Now you have to have this conversation. Is that what you're supposed to be doing? What? What? Is that what you're supposed to do with ketchup packets? Have you ever seen me do that? No. Then why are you doing it? I don't know. Okay, why are you doing something if you don't know what you're doing? That's what stupid is. Why are you doing something stupid? Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, now you're in trouble. Like, that's how it has to be. Like, you gotta... Can, when you catch them in the act, you gotta walk them through the logic. Is this something you're supposed to be doing? No? Then why are you doing it? Have you ever seen me do it? No? Then why are you doing it? I don't know. Why are you doing something if you don't know why you're doing it? 
Oh, oh, yeah, that's stupid. Don't do stupid things. Now you're in trouble. They have to associate being stupid with being in trouble. Because when you're an adult and you do stupid things, guess what happens? You get in trouble for it, right? You get pulled over, you go to jail, you get a ticket, your neighbor beats you up or shoots your dog or whatever. And stupidity leads to bad consequences in life. Do you want stupid kids that are criminals that have bad things happen to them all the time and nobody likes, that nobody wants to be around? No. If that's not what you want, you have to walk your kids through the logic of these things. Uh, (laughs) Because it's getting bad out here, man. I'm watching, like there is going to be a generation of young white female psychopaths very very soon it's not gen x or gen z it's going to be the next generation these these um five to let's say three to six year old little white girls that y'all are running around calling sissy with the play pants with the frills on them and and they just freaking scream for no they're just in the room you know, we were at church and there's a kid, just this little girl, and we're trying to pray. And this girl is running full speed in a circle going, ah! and nobody's doing anything about it. <clears throat> and I'm looking around and I, and I, I say, whose kid is this? And then the parent is like suddenly motivated to do something like those kids are going to be psychopaths when they get older, when they get to teenage years, they're going to be psychotic malicious crazy people because they do bad things and they never get in trouble for it and what are they going to do they're just going to grow in that malice and that behavior that entitlement and they're going to do bad things to other people because they can until they start getting held accountable for things so as long as they're never held accountable they're just going to keep doing stuff and they're going to say well if i got away with that i don't get away with this you ever wonder why like people like these women they will just like see if they can break a dude break a dude's heart just to see just to see if they could do it or like these guys they just cheat on their girlfriends or they'll just be like be on tinder in front of their girlfriend or something they're like these these people just do horrible things to each other it's because they started small it, they started running around in a circle in church screaming and nobody said anything about it and then they were like well if i can get away with that wonder what else I can get away with. And so they just crank it up a notch. And next thing you know, your kid is the 12-year-old who's just like hanging from the freaking basketball hoop or just doing retarded stuff. And you're like, you're embarrassed because your kid should know better, but he doesn't. He doesn't know better. Why? Because he's stupid. Because you let him be. Like nobody starts out as a rapist, you know? Nobody starts out torturing animals. Or becoming a murderer. Let's say that. Well, nobody starts out becoming a murderer. First, they start picking on little kids around them. Then they start torturing animals. Then they start cranking it up more and more. And the next thing you know, they're a murderer. They're a rapist. And you're like, how did this happen? It's like, well, the signs were there. You didn't You didn't follow the signs of him putting firecrackers up a cat's butt or whatever. Now he's a full-blown mass murderer. And you're like, oh, I could be. Like that kid, that the giant autistic kid who beat the crap out of his teacher because the teacher took his Nintendo Switch away. I defy you to find a normal kid in school with a Nintendo Switch. Like, especially when the kid is like a 6'5", 300 pound autistic kid. Is he autistic or is he not autistic? Does he have developmental issues or does he not have him done that then why are you singing in the school with a switch a nintendo why are you letting him go to school with nintendo games why does he have access to that anyway he's developmentally challenged right and that's like not the best thing for his development is to be on video games all the time then why are you allowing it to happen so now she wants he beat the crap out of the teacher i think the teacher died or almost died or something and then the mom is whining like oh my baby no, no, not oh my baby. Like you're a bad parent. You raised a criminal and now he's being charged for crimes because you didn't teach him any better. He's stupid. I'm telling you, man, your kid's doing stupid stuff. That's not the time to be getting a cell phone out and trying to record it and, and post it on TikTok for some clicks. 
You want to click something? You click a belt across their behind before they end up embarrassing you for real by killing someone or worse. Or maybe not worse. I mean, that's probably like the worst thing you can do. But you know what I mean? Like, you're going to stop being invited to places. People are going to not want to be around you. Or worse, they're, get, they're not going to want to be around your kid for their entire life. And that's going to affect them, man. You got to, we just, we got to, you got to do better. I wish I could give you more examples of kids being stupid, but stupid is, like I said, it's much like insanity where you can't predict it. It's just, it's stupid. It's not, it's doing things that you're not supposed to be doing. There's a large element of it. So go out there and teach your kids what stupid is. Go out there and correct your kids. Uh, Oh, there was one other thing because stupid is very dangerous too. So let me give you an example of that. You ever meet these kids where you can't leave them alone or they will do something dangerous like drive their big wheel down the stairs or put a put a fork in the outlet or pick up a gun and look at it and pull the trigger. I was we had some we were doing some prop videos, some prop photography with uh, cowboy guns. And the girl picks up a gun and everybody in the family goes, "No, no, 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 no." no. Because she put her finger on the trigger. And I'm like, hey, kid, you got to practice trigger discipline. And then the mom looks at me and says, oh, we're a military family. She already knows. No, she doesn't. That's why you guys were yelling at her. Everybody was yelling at her. You haven't taught her. Now you're embarrassed. I said, yeah, you guys need to take her to the range a little bit. Oh, well, we have our own land. Okay. Well, then take her down the range. Take her down the side of the mountain. Teach her how to shoot a gun. So she doesn't hold it the wrong way. Teach her gun safety so she doesn't shoot somebody. Don't get mad at me because I'm, you're embarrassed. Like, that's your fault. I watched them. Like, kids will do dangerous things. I grew up in the 80s where we had Mr. Yuck stickers. So we knew. Well, I don't know about me. I don't, you speak for yourself. These kids knew not to drink bleach because we had classes. Mr. Mr. Yuck stickers. We had constant you know, commercials on TV and stuff telling you, hey, this is retarded, don't do it. And it was constant. PSAs and TV shows and, and parents teaching you and, and movies talking about it. And, and like, now we don't teach kids nothing. We just expect them to learn through osmosis. So I don't think, I don't, I don't want to see too many, like these Gen Z vid- streamers that are making videos about kids being stupid. They don't have kids. They don't know. They don't freak, their kids are going to be dumb too because they're not going to teach them anything. But that's the key to it really the mo- start with the most dangerous stuff man hey the stove is hot don't touch it they're gonna touch it don't touch slap their leg don't touch it okay T- go ahead no touch it go ahead ah yeah hurt didn't it that's why i told you not to touch it you have to guide them through some things you're just there's gonna be a level of suffering some of it you induce smacking their leg spanking them or whatever some of them you just letting it happen but don't wait until they go fully pick up a gun or stick a fork in the outlet and be like, oh, I should have taught him. Ah. That's your fault, man. Anyways, so there's, this is, this is one thing I gotta, I gotta bring up and talk about because some people are gonna say, well, well, he can't help it and what if he blah, blah, blah. And there's always that one person that wants to take the extreme and make it to the norm. And there's a, f- so let's talk about that real quick. I, I make comments about people being autistic a lot because people uh, they have they show autistic behavior a lot. I mean that's why I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be a bully or make jokes at other people's expenses. Like I'm very serious about this. There is a rise of autism due to vaccines, due to other reasons, uh, food, screen induced autism. Like I taught you, you know that one goes away after a while. But we have all these things that are causing people to to show autistic behavior. And if your kid, if you say, hey, don't put your hand on the hot stove. And they say, okay, daddy. And then they immediately put their hand on the hot stove. And you're like, it hurt, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really hurt. Okay, now you know, don't put your hand on the hot stove. And you walk away and then they do it again. Okay, something's wrong with your kid. Like they have a learning, a serious learning disability. And it's probably going to get them killed if you're not on top of them all the time. That is a kid who's not stupid, that is a kid There's like something is wrong 
like they had, they're severely autistic or something else. That's not what I'm talking about when I talk about kids being stupid. I'm talking about kids who are not sick or they don't have a developmental issue and they're just they just do stupid stuff still because you're not teaching them. That's what I'm talking about. But these kids that like your parents you have to be you have to honestly assess things. You have to be honest. Like is my kid stupid or does my kid, or is my kid autistic? Like those are legitimate questions, you know? Um, I, two of my children, one of them we had tested for, cause I was like, I don't know, man. I, I think, you know, my kid's autistic. We need to find out for sure. This, this is the worst intersection. Is there somebody behind me? Cause I'm just going to have to back up and go somewhere else because everybody wants to be at this intersection. Please bear with me for a minute. I'm trying to turn left and immediately this truck pulls up and he's like, I'm going to turn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can go, you can have it. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'll figure out another way to turn left we'll do a michigan left okay so but no, if your kid is developmentally challenged and you're not taking steps to get them the help that they need that's bad parenting like you're being a bad parent and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to go put them in a government program or something but like at the very least you need to take into account, okay, you know Bobby's autistic, so you can't just leave him at the playground with a sharp object or whatever the, whatever the issue is with him. You can't just expect everybody else to, to know that he's autistic and to act accordingly. You can't just go around warning the whole world, oh, Bobby's autistic, don't be normal like you do with other kids because my kid's special my kids are, you know what I mean? Like, that's your responsibility. You're a parent. It's not society's responsibility. You have to actually, you know, take into account that your kids are to, and, and make those types of decisions. And this is the thing. This is like an infection in society right now. You know, but you won't do what you need to do to make it easier for your kids and easier for people around you. <laughs> then you're selfish. That's really what it is. You want everybody to pretend your kid's not autistic, right? Or something else. Like, you ever see those um, notes where the, the um, it's, it's always every Halloween. Please don't give out, you know, candy, something, something. My, my son has a severe condition and cannot, and I want him to trick or treat. Look, I'm sorry for you, but you already said it. Your kid's got a severe condition. He can't go trick or treating like everybody else. Stop pretending that something that's not normal is normal. It's not. You're, that's what, that's the, like, definition-wise of normal. If everybody has to change what they're doing for you, that's not normal. So you're going to have to live the life that you have. It doesn't mean he's a bad person. It doesn't mean that he's wrong. Or, you know what I mean? Like, you're being selfish. That's what that means. That means you as a parent are being selfish to expect the whole reality to change and bend to make your kid think he's normal when it's not. And normal is... Like people like to say normal is relative. That's some BS. There's normal. And then there are things that are not normal. And every, I think everybody has at least one or two things about them that is not normal. And then everything else is pretty normal. You know, it's just like there's a range that we just consider normal. Like most, most people have two arms, two hands, two feet. Most people speak to each other verbally. Most people wear pants. You know, or, or clothing. These are normal things. Most people refrain from slapping each other. Like, those. that's normal. And then you always have, like, the one person who just shows up with no pants. And they're like, but I, I, you can't say I'm not normal. No, it's not normal, bro. You don't have pants on. That's, that's, that's what that means. I just, I just, considering the context. I pull up. They're four teenage girls staring at the pavement instead of getting out of my way so I can park. That's not normal. That's stupid. <laughs> Somebody has to teach them. Um, but that's not a developmentally thing. So anyways, let's... I, I needed to throw that in there because there's always the one person that wants to take offense and make everything about them. Well, my kid is special and you're just being unfair. No, I'm not. I just... 
the th- real issue is that I didn't take you into account and you're making everything about you because you're probably a selfish person. Stop doing that. Like kids need, kids that need help need the help. And you can't keep putting them, it's cruel to keep sending them in the situations that they can't handle. And you know they can't handle it because you want to feel like you have a normal kid. Like that's just selfish. So with that caveat, I got to go. Uh, my first two EPs, Better Off and Heaven's Hype, are for sale on zeroforhire.com. Go to the music section. You can get each of those EPs for 99 cents each. And I'm only running this until the end of New Year's. So you can get that. Uh, you guys have a good day.